Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second session in American English Live Teacher Development Series 5. My name is Lauren, and I'll be with you today, along with my colleague behind the scenes, Amy, who will be serving as moderator to help answer your questions and respond to your comments during the session. Today, our host, Kate, will be talking with our presenter, John Kotnarowski, about using illustrated stories to increase learner motivation and engagement while animating your classes. So let's get started. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Um, as Lauren said, my name is Kate, and I am part of the American English social media team. And I'm very happy to be your facilitator and host once again today. So very glad to be with you all and so happy to see you all here today. We'd like to extend a warm welcome to our first time viewers and are also very happy to see all of you who've been with us for many sessions. Thanks for being here. Let's start with this great photo featuring Maricela Velasquez from Mexico City, Mexico. She is using teaching techniques that she learned in a previous American English Live session. So we love to see teachers using um, uh, the tips that we share, sharing ideas, um, using strategies presented in American English Live sessions, participating in viewing groups at local US embassies or American spaces, corners, or binational centers. So please share your photos by emailing them to American English webinars at elprograms.org or by sharing them on social media. If you share via social media, make sure that you tag us at American English for Educators so that we can see the great photos that you share. We hope to use one of your photos in our next session. So today we'll explore teaching English with comics and graphic novels. And we're also going to be talking about that topic during our next session on May 29th. Later in the series, we're gonna focus on learner motivation. We look forward to learning with you. What, is, what are you most excited about in this series? So here's a little bit about what to expect for today's session. Each session is approximately 60 minutes long and is often related to an American English eTeacher massive open online course or a Teacher's Corner theme on the American English website and in our Teacher's Corner Facebook group. The presenter will present the material and I, as your host, will ask questions and make comments as well but we really hope to hear from you, our audience, so that we can address any questions, comments, ideas, experiences that you have. So please do share your ideas using the comments or chat. When our session comes to a close in about an hour, you will have an opportunity to receive a digital badge for your participation. At the end of the session, we'll share a link in the comments and at the top of this post. Click on that link and complete a short quiz about today's session. You must answer two out of three multiple choice questions correctly. And once you've successfully passed the quiz, you can expect to receive your badge by email from badger at badger.io in about a week. It's not too late to join the free self-paced American English eTeacher massive open online course teaching grammar communicatively. This practice-oriented MOOC will help participants explore how to adapt grammar instruction to better meet students' needs. Participants learn how to integrate grammar instruction with other language skills, explore task-based language approaches, and evaluate error correction strategies. Students study independently without a facilitator in this self-paced MOOC, and you can log in and complete coursework at any time during the 12 weeks that are listed here. Um, as you can see, it'll be open until June 17th. We'd also love it if you wanted to join a MOOC camp or a MOOC discussion group. So get your colleagues together. You can all join the MOOC together and you can help each other learn about this wonderful topic together. And now for today's session, animating your instruction using comics and graphic novels in the English language classroom. Today we will explore the popularity of illustrated stories among teachers and students alike and offer suggestions on how to use them to animate your classes. During this presentation, we will examine some of the benefits and challenges of using these graphical texts, review ideas um, for activities and for integrating these creative resources into the way you teach reading, writing, critical thinking, visual literacy, and culture. And we will also um, 
share resources such as comic strip generators and example comics. And now I'm happy to introduce our presenter today, John Kotronowski. John has spent the last 10 years teaching English to speakers of other languages. He's taught in Ecuador, China, and the United States. And he was a US Department of State English Language Fellow in Moscow, Russia during the 2014 to 15 academic year. He currently works at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign as a lecturer in the linguistics department. His teaching interests include all levels of academic writing as well as materials design and development. Outside of teaching, he loves watching movies and hiking with his wife and their little dog. Welcome, John. We're so happy to have you here today. Hey, Kate. Thanks for that introduction. It's nice to see you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, everybody, and uh, welcome to AE Live session 5.2, Animating Your Instruction. Um, I'm really excited to be here and leading this professional development session today. Thanks for joining me. Um, so for me, I'm really interested in uh, the way that people learn. As a teacher, that's one of my favorite things to think about. And over my time teaching, I've found that people learn in a lot of different ways. Some people learn with their hands. Some people learn best by listening. But for me, pictures and images really help me understand things better. And so I like talking about how we can use pictures and images in the classroom. And I think this is also one of the reasons why I like graphic novels and comics so much and I'm so excited to talk about this topic with you today. So let's get started and take a look at how this session is going to be organized. Um, so I'd like to begin with a really brief introduction to the topic. After that, I want to spend some time defining some key terms. From there, we'll go and we'll talk about some of the benefits of using graphic novels and comics in your classroom and then some of the challenges and how we can overcome these challenges. And finally, I'd like to talk about some activity ideas, how we can engage our students using these resources and how we can use these resources to learn and improve our language skills ourselves. So let's get started. And I'd like to begin with a question. And I'd like to pose this question without any answers just yet. I want mm -hmm. you to just to think about this question for right now, okay? So why do images help us when communicating? And so for right now, just think, I'm going to ask this question again in about a minute, and then I'll ask for your answers. So why do images help us when communicating? All right, everybody, just think about it. I know it's gonna be hard not to write your responses, <laughs> but we're gonna be exploring this and, and um, have an opportunity for your comments in just a couple minutes. <laughs> All right, so uh, humans have used images to communicate for a really long time. And if we take a look at a cave painting like this from centuries ago, it seems clear to me that the artist maybe wanted to share a story with us, maybe a tradition, maybe he or she wanted to tell us what daily life was like. Maybe they just wanted to have fun. And so I think about images and I think we can use them for so many different things. Uh, we can share emotions, we can store our memories with them, we can use them to tell jokes, we can use them to share information in an easy to understand way. And this is still true today. So today people use images all the time to communicate. So from online memes to help mm -hmm. make jokes to emojis and text messages, people rely on pictures and images to express themselves and share their opinions with other people. So Kate, what, what about you? Do you use emojis a lot? I love emojis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel, like, I feel like in text messages, emails, I use them all the time. Mm -hmm. They're really fun. And sometimes they almost express even better um, something that I am feeling or want to, sh want to share even better than um, words. <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. I agree completely. So I want to go back to my question. And my question is, why do images help us when communicating? All right, so, now we're ready for your answers, everybody. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? Why do images help us when communicating? Let's see. We have lots of responses. Um, they're coming in very, very quick. 
Cool. Yeah. The Let's see. Oh, yeah. Tayab says even a person who's not able to read can understand an image. Great. Absolutely. I agree completely. Kusar says it gives clear ideas, easy to understand from lots of people like Lisa Ye. Definitely. Akhtar says it makes the ideas clear. Juliana says it tells stories. Ooh, that's Wonderful a good one. responses. Yeah. Let's see. Um, Hiba says we use emojis and images to express ourselves and Yusuf, which I think is interesting, wrote a picture is worth a thousand words. I wonder if that's going to come up later in the oh, presentation. Wow. <laughs> yeah. What a good piece of wisdom. I like that a lot. <laughs> um, and Alexander says memes are very useful. They help with motivation in the class and keep students active. So great responses, everybody. Thank you. And keep them coming. Yeah, these are great responses. Thanks for all your participation. Um, for me, I think um, images as, as a part of communication can be summed up with a phrase that we've already heard, mm -hmm. right? A picture is sometimes worth a thousand words. And I really like this phrase. Um, basically, it means a single picture or an image can share a complex idea better than a lot of words can. And I think this is really true. So I think we heard it before. That's awesome. Um, so this idea that images are able to share so much information is one of the main strengths of comic books and graphic novels. Um, and it's one of the reasons why they're so great to teach and learn another language. Um, so these resources use a lot of pictures and text and they combine together to provide a lot of information to analyze and to help understand what's going on. So here I've got a really short little example. Um, in the top panel, we have, um, we have this uh, kind of angry looking guy saying, we must assign our <laughs> students academic articles. All right. And then in the second panel, we have two people saying, yes, I agree. And of course. And then we've kind of got this cool guy who's, <laughs> who's kind of leaning back and saying, well, I think comics are more interesting. <laughs> And then in the final panel, we've got uh, a disagreement, yeah. <laughs> a very serious disagreement um, that ends with the cool guy kind of literally getting kicked out of the room. So poor this guy. is a, yeah, poor guy. So this is a really, um, it's a great example because it's short. There's characters, we can see their faces, we can see their gestures, their facial expressions, there's dialogue, there's a beginning, there's a middle, there's an end. And so even with this short example, we can see comics are really accessible. They're visually appealing. And I think for these two reasons, they're really great resources for teaching and learning languages. So let's, uh, let's keep moving through the presentation. All right, in this part, I'd like to talk a little bit about some key terms and provide some definitions for these key terms. And so I'm going to use another comic that I made. This time I made it using a website called makebeliefscomics.com. You guys oh, can see cool. the link at yeah. the bottom. And then I'll also um, link you guys to this website on the Ning page after the presentation. Okay, great. And that, this, is, this is so cute. <laughs> yeah. So this is something, uh, this is a character. I call him Mr. K. All right. Mm -hmm. And it's a really short little comic. And it begins with him very happy saying comic strips are often short and funny. And then it goes and he looks a little bit less happy. And he says, this one is quite short. And then at the end, he says, however, it is not very funny. OK, there you go. so again, we've got a <laughs> we've got a beginning, a middle and an end. Um, and I want to use this as an example to talk about three uh, vocabulary terms that are really helpful for discussing comics and graphic novels. And the first is panel. So a panel is just kind of like a scene from a story. Okay. Um, and so just like reading books uh, and magazines in English, we're usually going to start on the left and move our way over to the right. So um, this is how the story is laid out. It's laid out across panels. All right. The second vocabulary word is text balloon. And sometimes these are called speech balloons or speech bubbles, but they're used to share the thoughts and speech of the characters in the comic. And then finally, we've got captions. And we use captions to provide any additional information. So captions aren't speech. Captions are things like um, time of day or the date. Is it in the past, present, or future? 
What's the weather like? So they're used for providing additional information. Okay. So now that we have a better idea of how comics are built with these three key vocabulary terms, I'd like to talk really quickly about the differences between comic strips, comic books, and graphic novels. To do this, I want to start with a question. So again, please share your comments um, and answers in the comments section. But what are the differences between comic books and graphic novels? Yeah, let's hear from you, everybody. What would you say are the differences between comic books and graphic novels? What do you think? Um, and if you want, let us know any of your favorite comic books or graphic novels while you're at it. Definitely. I'd love to hear. I love talking <laughs> about comics. Yeah. So what are the differences when you think of um, comic books and graphic novels? Let's see. We have a question about what is a graphic novel, and John will talk a little bit more about that. So good. But we'll, let's see, comic books have more pictures than words from Wen Jin. Okay, Novel, yeah. <clears throat> uh, graphic novels are longer from Steven. Great. Kusar says comic books have pictures. Very good. Comic books are more fun, Ariana. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Comic strips are shorter. That's from Anna. Great, Anna. Um, and comic books have less text in contrast to graphic novels. So great, some wonderful ideas out there. It look, sounds like you guys, some of you have more experience than others with this type of material, which is great. Yeah, that's awesome. These are great answers. So let's, uh, let's take a look. Let's look at some of the differences between these three types of texts. So let's begin with a comic strip. Um, and a comic strip is just a collection or a story, a sequence of drawings that's contained in panels that tells a story with text balloons and captions. Um, and a lot of times comic strips, at least here in the US, are going to be funny. And so a really classic example is Peanuts. So if you've ever seen Snoopy or Charlie Brown, these are two really famous characters um, from the comic strip Peanuts. Okay. A comic book um, is very similar to comic strips, but they're longer and they're usually a little bit more complex. They use the same techniques. They use drawings, they use text balloons and speech balloons, um, but the stories are often a little bit more complex and they're a little bit longer. All right. And so right now, comic books are really popular. If you guys have seen Avengers or Iron Man or any of those Marvel movies, all of those began as comic books. All of those began as comic book characters. So before they were doing all this awesome stuff uh, on movie screens, they were comic book characters in books that nerdy kids like me would read in our free time. <laughs> and then graphic novels, and I think we already got some great um, information about these, but they're usually longer. They use similar techniques but they're often about much more serious subjects. So we've got this name, graphic novel. Novel, because it's longer and it's a little bit more serious, but graphic because the story is told, again, with a lot of pictures. And two really classic examples of graphic novels are uh, Watchmen by Alan Moore and The Arrival by Sean Tan. So we've taken a look, we've seen some of the similar or some of the differences between these three types of texts. So length, comic strips are usually shorter, graphic novels are usually longer, and also content. Comic strips are usually a little bit lighter and funnier, whereas graphic novels, they can be a little bit more serious. However, they all share one big important similarity, and that is Comic strips, comic books, graphic novels, they all use images to help tell a story, okay? So that's the thing that we wanna focus on for the rest of our session today. So let's move on to the next part of our presentation. Great, one quick comment sort of question yeah. from Jose Luis. Um, comics are great for younger learners, but they can also be adapted for adults as well. Would you agree? Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. And I think for a lot of these resources, um, 
even graphic novels we can use with younger learners. Um, it, it just depends on what the objective for the activity is. So if we want to have them describing a scene, I think that's something that we could use any of these for. I think you're absolutely right. Comic strips for more advanced learners could be used to talk about things like humor, to be able to talk about things like real language as opposed to textbook language. So. I want to talk today, actually, when we get to the activity ideas about how we can adapt these resources and activities for use with a lot of different learners, because I think that's a great point. They're very adaptable. Great. And just real quick, I think you mentioned this, but Iram had a question. Um, can a comic book be serious, too? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I think I, I tried to generalize a little bit, but if we look at some of the, for example, um, Marvel comic books, or if we look at some of the superhero comic books that are really popular, they often deal with serious topics like crime, like life and death, like how to be a good person. Mm -hmm. So I definitely think they can be both fun and adventurous, but also serious. Great. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So um, in this next part, in parts three and four, I'd like to go through and discuss some of the benefits and challenges of using comics and graphic novels in the classroom. But first, I'm interested to know what you guys think. So I have another question. What are some of the benefits of using comic books and graphic novels in the classroom? So please share yeah, your answers. Yeah. Marife says um, that they're very fun to use in the classroom. Yes, absolutely. That's a great answer. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Nazim says they're very interesting. Yeah. Let's see. Um, sorry. <laughs> no, oh, no more problem. Relaxing, more relaxing compared to textbooks from Zwin. Yes, that's a great comment. I completely agree. A few people, a lot of people saying easy to understand and motivating for students. Absolutely. Yep. And because students are interested in them. Very yep. good. Yeah. So these are all great ideas. I really appreciate you guys sharing. I'm, I'm curious. Did you guys get to see my, my presentation before I'm giving it now? <laughs> because these are all the things that I want to talk about. Um, so let's talk about some of the benefits now. Um, and the first one has to do with learner motivation. So this is something that people have already mentioned. Um, but comics and graphic novels help to reduce anxiety and help to build confidence among people with lower proficiency or learners who are maybe not that confident. And they also increase student motivation and interest. So they're really popular right now, especially in the US. I know in other parts of the world, um, but new ones are coming out all the time. They're TV shows, there are movies, um, there are online groups that are dedicated to discussing these resources. So they're also a good starting place for people who, like I mentioned, might not be very confident about their language learning. So instead of getting a page where it's just text, you get this page that's filled with color and pictures and, like I said, facial expressions and gestures. Um, so there's a lot more information and it's a lot easier to understand what's going on without just relying on the words. And then finally, for me, like I mentioned, I'm a visual learner. So these are really appealing to visual learners like me. So there are other benefits as well. Um, and the next group of benefits has to do with reading comprehension. So the images in comic books and graphic novels can actually help people with low proficiency or all of us actually generally um, understand better what's going on in a story. And then we can also use these uh, images to help learn new vocabulary words. So there's so much information, like I said, um, that it's easier to get the meaning of things from context and we don't have to rely just on the text on the page. That's great. Actually, Carlos said the same thing. They can convey the meaning of a new word in context. Absolutely. Nice. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, another benefit has to do with writing skills. And so um, I really think that comics and graphic novels are helpful to teach different elements of storytelling. So we could talk about something like plot what's going on in the story, it's a little bit easier to understand with these images. Um, 
other elements like a beginning, an introduction to a story or an ending to a story. Um, and then also they can help students or they can help all of us to generate more complex ideas for writing. So um, when we talk about things like love and death and you know writing terms like metaphor or simile, with these pictures, it becomes easier to talk about them. And the more we can talk about them, the better that we can understand them. So it, it does have benefits for writing as well. Um, and then the last uh, benefit that I wanna talk about is this cool concept called visual literacy. And I like this um, quote. It says, students today cannot just learn to read words. They also require training in the literacy of images, gestures, space, and sound. Comics provide an especially rich genre for this kind of training. And so for me, we live in a world where lots of information is shared through pictures. So commercials use images to sell products. In politics, politicians use images to communicate with voters. And because comics and graphic novels feature images so much, we can ask questions about what do these images mean? Why did, the, why did the illustrator choose to include this image? Why is this image a part of the story? What's the relationship between the images and the text in the story as well? And it gets people thinking critically about the things that they're seeing and not just the words that they're reading. So That's such a wonderful benefit. I'm so glad that you brought that up because we do live in such a world that is just more and more visual um, and we're kind of inundated with images all the time. So this is a great um, tool that we can use to help our students to start thinking more critically about the images that they see. So thanks so much. This is a great concept. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so these are some of the benefits. Um, I think there are other benefits. You guys have already mentioned some of the other benefits. But now I'd like to talk about some of the challenges that come with using these types of texts. So first, I want, I want you guys to tell me. I'm curious to know, what do you think are some of the challenges of using comic books and graphic novels? Great, so what do you think everyone? We've talked about all of the great benefits of using comic books and graphic novels, but what do you think are some of the challenges in using comic books and graphic novels? Um, Woon Jun Lin says maybe they are time consuming. Definitely, yep. Let's see, what else? Um, maybe you have to teach some other skills like using um, apps or things like that. Students That's, might get distracted. Both of those are very true. Yep, I agree. Let's see. Sometimes they're not available. That's a great point, Kusar. Yes. Yeah, I think that's a really big challenge. Mm -hmm. That was a Hard challenge for me. Hard to find resources. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and maybe Akhtar says it's difficult because the, the required course books are so time consuming, maybe. Yep, very true. Yeah. Yeah. Kate, can you think, do you think there are any other challenges? Um, maybe, I, th I think maybe some people might not take it too seriously if it's like maybe the parents or the students think it's not real reading or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I definitely think that's a real challenge. Um, so I, I actually see three major challenges and they're very similar to what you guys are mentioning. Um, so the first one for me is I think it's important to respect copyright. And so I think um, because a lot of comics and graphic novels are created by independent authors and illustrators, um, this is their life. This is their way of making uh, money. Um, and so I think it's important to respect the copyright. Um, additionally, I think some comics can be pretty inappropriate. Mm -hmm. There's either violence or offensive language. Um, and so sometimes finding an appropriate comic can be a challenge. And then, yeah, kind of like what you mentioned, uh, Kate, I think sometimes getting students or parents or even teachers to treat comics as graphic novels um, can, uh, as, as serious uh, texts, excuse me, can be a challenge. So with these three challenges in mind, what do you guys think? How can we deal with these challenges? How can we overcome them? Great, yeah, how can we overcome some of these challenges about copyright or finding the appropriate kinds of comics or 
helping students and parents and other faculty member consider graphic novels, serious texts or real reading and writing development uh, material. What do you think, everyone? Let's see, we can adapt them from Edgar. Great. Let yes. Us... <laughs> Excellent. Um, design it yourself from um, Alexander. That might be a way to respect copyright. Um, and um, John, you shared that link with us. That's great. Yeah, that's a great idea. I love that. I, I feel like if you're creative and your classes are creative and you want to go ahead and design your own, do it. That's an awesome idea. Yeah. Um, and Ethan says the teacher can be the example in that way. So that's great. Yes, absolutely. Oh, I love this one from, I think it was from Lizzie, have students create the comics. Great Definite, idea. Definitely. Yep. Um, let's see. Yeah, great ideas. I think, I think those are a lot of really good ones. Cool. A lot yep. of people saying design your own. Um, so great. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, these are all great ideas. Um, you know, I, I, I think everybody is being even more creative than my <laughs> suggestions are going to be. So that's awesome. Um, so for me, with these three challenges, um, I have the following solutions. So the first thing to make sure that we respect copyright is um, I'm going to introduce a comic today that you can use without having to worry about copyright. So uh, if, if it seems like something you'd like to use in your class, I encourage you to do that. Um, in terms of making sure they're appropriate, I think as teachers, as leaders, as examples, we need to read things first and make sure that it's appropriate for our group in terms of age, in terms of just everything that's happening. You wouldn't use the same comic with a group of college students that you would with a group of elementary age students. Um, and then also, I think it's up to us to use activities that show students how thoughtful and creative and imaginative these texts can be. Um, so, I want to talk really quickly um, about a couple of ways that we can find appropriate comics and graphic novels, and then we'll move on to talking about some activity ideas. Sounds good. All right. So to find some, if you don't want to make your own, if you're looking for some, I recommend searching online. And I think a good search phrase that you can put into your web browser is, free comics and graphic novels. I have it right here on the screen. Um, and you put that in and you're going to find a lot of different resources. So here's where the hard part or the fun part, depending on um, your personal preferences, comes in. You have to do some reading. And once you find something that's interesting, I recommend going one step further um, and looking on the web page or the website for the author to give permission to use his or her work. So I've got an example here. Um, this is from a comic that we're gonna talk about today. And here the author, the creator is saying, yes, I hope you will use my work. And here's the license, here's all the information that you need in order to make sure that you're using it according to copyright rules. But he's just saying, please use my work. And this is actually becoming more and more popular these days. A lot of creators want their work to be shared and used openly. So if you're searching, I recommend just looking for permission pages. Um, another thing that you can do is um, in the next American English Teachers Corner, I believe they're going to feature a new comic. Is that is that correct, Kate? Yeah, yeah. There's a new comic coming up, and also in our on our Teachers Corner page, we have ideas for using um, comics in the classroom. Um, yeah. Awesome. Great. Um, and then finally, uh, I'm going to have some links after the presentation on the Ning page, and they will link you to the comic that we talk about, um, another comic, a comic generator, list of activity ideas for using comics. Um, so it will be a good start, and I encourage anybody who's interested in using comics and graphic novels to check out those links after the presentation. Great. So uh, can you guys think of any other ways that you might be able to find comics or graphic novels? Yeah, are there other ways that you guys use? Um, there's also on the American English website, there's also um, Why English Comics, um, and those are also linked on the Ning page. Um, so those are some comics that were developed that we developed a few years ago. Um, so those are also a resource for you on AmericanEnglish.state.gov. 
Let's see, what else? Any other ideas, everyone? I'm seeing a lot of thank yous cool. <laughs> for these, <All> right. for <laughs> these <laughs> ideas. So. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah, so I guess we can just keep moving on then. <laughs> Sounds good. Cool. All right. So we've talked about some of the benefits and some of the challenges. We've talked about how we can find these resources and if not find, create our own. Um, now I want to talk about some activities that can get students thinking critically about comics and graphic novels. So I'd like to talk about three different types of activities and maybe give an example or two of each type. So first we can discuss some pre-reading activities. Um, then we'll go over a couple of reading activities and ways to check student comprehension of a comic. And then finally, I'd like to propose a couple of post-reading creation activities. Um, so lots of different activities, and they're really similar, I think, to activities that you would use with a story or a poem or a book, um, but we're just adapting them to use with these visual stories. So to get started, I really want to um, quickly introduce the comic that I've chosen as my example for this webinar. So I chose a comic called Pepper and Carrot. Um, I think it's a really good example because I think it's visually appealing. You can use it with learners of all ages and it respects copyright. So it's created by somebody named David Ravoy. It's about a young witch, that's the girl, Pepper, and her cat, Carrot, okay? Um, so it's free for anyone to use. It's appropriate for all ages. It's even been translated into, I think, over 20 different languages. Wow. Um, so after the presentation with the link that gets shared, you'll see they even have some resources for teachers to use um, to help use this comic in class. So here's an example of the artwork um, in the comic. So Kate, what do you think? Do you like it? I love it. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. really beautiful art. Yeah, I think it's it's so nice. It's not stick figures. It's got lots of colors. It's got these really cool uh, characters. So I think it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, so let's get started talking about some of the pre-reading activities that uh, you might use with students. So the first one um, is some discussion questions. And discussion questions are really basic. I like to put students into pairs and ask them to discuss some questions. After they finish discussing, um, I'll bring them back together and we'll talk about their answers together as a whole group. And I like to start with some more general questions. And the general questions will be about, you know, comics, art, uh, images, and then I'll ask more specific questions. So after students have had a chance to discuss, we'll discuss together. Um, so here are some example questions that you guys, uh, or that I might use. I think you can adapt them to make them simpler or more complex, depending on the class that you're working with. Um, and I'm curious to know what you guys think about these questions. So I don't wanna discuss all of them, um, but the first is a expression that we've already used today. So the first question I might ask is, what does the expression, a picture is worth a thousand words mean? So I've given mine, what do you guys think? Share your ideas in the comment section. Yeah, so here are some example questions for pre-reading, but what example questions would you maybe use for your classroom? Um, you might want to think about the image that John shared a little bit earlier, um, or about the characters. What kinds of pre-reading questions would you have your students answer um, before they were about to read something like Pepper and Parrot? Let's see, something about different opinions and ideas from Nazim. Definitely. Um, ask, them, ask them what they understand. Let's see. <laughs> um, what else? Um, you could maybe just ask students to name what they see in the picture. Yep. Let's see. Yeah, describe the scene. Mm -hmm. Oh, you could... Uh, Deva Dorge says you could imagine the book without showing the pictures at first. So maybe you introduce the topic and have students brainstorm words and then they can see the image later. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. Yeah, I love that idea. Ask general questions about the issues mentioned in the text. Yeah, wonderful ideas, everyone. Thanks for sharing. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, we've got some questions here. Um, the first one says, what does the expression a picture is worth a thousand words mean? Then it goes on to ask, what kinds of information can we get from looking at a picture that we cannot simply get from reading? Um, we're going to read a book called Pepper and Carrot. What is a comic book? Can you think of any other examples? So these are kind of similar to the questions that you guys um, are proposing as well. Um, so this last one I think is a little bit tricky and I'd kind of be interested <laughs> to know what you guys think about this. So it says um, Pepper and Carrot is a comic about magic, kind of like Harry Potter. Um, how would you describe magic using only words. So what would you guys say? How would you describe magic using only words? Share your answers in the comment section. What do you think, everyone? How would you describe magic if you could only use words? Um, Unreal from Juliana, I like it. Yeah, that's, oh, that's a great one. It's a good one. Um, I wouldn't have been able to think about that one. What do no. you guys think? <laughs> Me either. <laughs> How would you describe an unusual, good? Yes, absolutely. Trick. Spells, yep. <laughs> supernatural, incredible. Ooh, those are both great. Murasa says beyond real. Absolutely. Yeah, so unreal, beyond real, supernatural. Yusuf says he thinks of a magic stick. I do too. Yep, same here. <laughs> a wand. Uh -huh. yep. <laughs> <laughs> the power that can change the state of things. Wow, good one from Yoko. Holy cow. Yeah, that's great. Right. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay, wonderful. Excellent responses, guys. Yeah, thanks, everybody. All right. So uh, you guys are clearly great with the discussion questions. Let's talk about <laughs> another kind of pre-reading activity that we could do. Um, and these are prediction questions. So these are similar to, I think, some of the ideas I heard being proposed just now. Um, so prediction questions, what I'll do is I'll show the first panel of the comic. And this gives people some information to think about. And I'll ask some questions that get their imaginations moving and get people starting to think and maybe think outside the box and maybe think what's going to happen and get excited. It's kind of like if you have dinner and you smell it before you eat it and it makes you hungry, the prediction questions make people hungry to read the story. Um, so I'll show the first panel and I'll ask questions like, what do you think this story will be about? Who are the characters? What will they do in this story? So this is the first panel of the first comic in the Pepper and Carrot series. And I want to know what you guys think. What do you think will happen in the story, just based on this image? Great, everyone. What do you think? What's going to happen in this story? This is the first panel in the um, comic. What do you think is going to happen? Looks like she might be cooking something. <laughs> kind of does, yeah. Magic soup from administrator. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, the car carrot looks bored, which I think is funny. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> let's see. Something amazing will be created from Steven. Good one. Ooh, nice one, Steven. Uh, let's see. Something enchanted is going to happen from Titzer. Ooh, great word. Um, let's see. She will have a great discovery that will change her life from Tiago. Good one. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, absolutely. Uh-oh. Someone says Nig says she's going to create a monster. Oop. I oh, hope not. Yeah, I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Great responses, everyone. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. That those are great answers, great responses. So let's let's think. Let's see what actually happens. Um and so now that everybody's hungry and ready to read the story, um, it's time to read. And so to do this, uh, I usually like to do two things. So first, um, just read through the story. And then second, read through it again, um, this time with a couple of comprehension questions. So let's take a look at what reading comprehension questions might look like. So like I said, first we'll read through together, all right? And you can do this as a whole class. You can do this individually. And then you'll read through twice. First time just to enjoy, just to get the idea of what the story is about. And the second time to answer a question. And these questions can look like my examples here. In one or two sentences, what happened in this story? 
Or after reading this story, how would you describe Carrot the Cat? And so this is the question that I'd like you guys to think about as we go through this short episode of Pepper and Carrot. So after reading, how would you describe Carrot the Cat? So let's take a look at how the story unfolds. So here we have panel number one, okay? And like people mentioned already, we've got Carrot looking bored in the background <laughs> and Pepper says, and the last touch. And she's putting something into the pot in the center of the page. So right now we already have an idea. Maybe this is gonna be about cooking. Maybe she's creating something, all right? So let's see what happens in the next panel. So here, if we look at the facial expressions, first of all, Carrot, doesn't care what's going on. <laughs> Carrot is bored or he's sleeping. Um, and, you know, here would be a great point where we could ask another question if we were reading together as a class. What does her, what does Pepper's facial expression tell us? So to me, she looks a little confused. She looks a little sad, maybe. And her dialogue confirms this. She says, hmm, probably not strong enough. Okay, so we still don't know what she's doing. We have to keep reading to see what's happening. So let's do that. So were you going to say something? Oh, Kate? no, I just uh, got surprised. <laughs> so <laughs> and now, putting a lot of something in there. <laughs> yeah, now in panel three, I think she's maybe given up following the recipe. I don't mm -hmm. know. If we look in the background, we've got this book. The book's open, so maybe that's where the recipe was. And now she doesn't seem to be following it anymore. Now she just says... <laughs> Here you go, take everything. And we can see that has gotten Carrot's attention. Carrot's awake now. <laughs> yep. So let's see what happens next. So here, okay, something has happened. Okay. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, this is the image that we looked at earlier. Um, and it looks like the two characters have very different reactions <laughs> as to what's going on here. Um, so Pepper says, oh, it's perfect. Okay, and Carrot doesn't seem to think that. Carrot is either surprised or angry or excited. We don't know yet. But in the middle, we've got this burst of color. We can see yellow, all right, with sparkles. And here might, I might ask another question. What do you think yellow represents? So if I was reading through this with a class, I would say, what does yellow represent? What's going to happen? What's the meaning of this color? So let's keep reading to see what yellow represents. So here in panel number five, we've got a lot of things going on. And it's important that we look for clues to try and understand what's happening, okay? So first we have Pepper telling Carrot, don't even think about it, all right? Don't even think about it, don't touch it. And it looks like if we look closely at the picture, she's taking the yellow stuff and she's painting it onto her broom, okay? And now I actually think we have some clues about what's going to happen, what the yellow stuff is, okay? So up in the air, we see a spoon that's yellow and sparkly, okay? And then we also see some kind of vegetable that's yellow and sparkly. So here I might ask, what do you think the yellow stuff does? What do you think the purpose of the yellow stuff is? Good question. Right? All right, so let's figure out. Let's see what it is. Let's go to panel number six. So we still don't get an answer yet, okay? So we've got the broom, it's glowing yellow. We've got the spoon, it's glowing yellow. We've got the vegetable, it's glowing yellow. And now Carrot is going to be glowing yellow soon uh -oh. too. Carrot's just <laughs> jumping right into the pot when Pepper has her back turned, okay? Um, and so let's see in the final panel what happens, okay? Oh. So, so in the final panel, if we take a look here, facial expressions are really important, okay? <laughs> so based on Pepper's facial expression, my guess is she's not too happy about what happened. Nope. Nope. Um, based on Carrot's facial expression, I think he might be happy with the result of Definitely. his little experiment. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and then in the background, we can say, uh, see, there's another witch and she's got her cat. And she's laughing, the witch is laughing, and the cat's got hearts in her eyes. So I think the cat actually oh. might have a little something for Carrot. Who knows? Um, <laughs> so for me, I'm thinking Carrot is a funny little cat, okay? Um, so if we can go to the next uh, slide here, 
this would be the time when I would ask people to start thinking about the comprehension questions that I ask. Um, and so first I'll ask them to do it individually by themselves so they have a chance to think. If they have a copy, they can go back and look at the whole um, comic. Then I'll ask them to discuss in pairs and then finally as a whole class. So I asked you guys at the beginning, after the, reading this story, how would you describe Carrot the cat? And I'm curious now, how would you describe him? Yeah, what words would you use to describe Carrot the cat? What do you think, everybody? Um, a lot of people just, um, other comments, people are saying he finally became a golden cat. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, curious, naughty from Rita. <laughs> Ooh, nice, yep. What other words, curious from Katrina as well. What other words would you use to describe Carrot the cat? So sometimes Hopefully it, curiosity doesn't kill the cat, says Kelly. Yeah, absolutely, Kelly. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> he changed color. Now he can fly from Mukhtar. Yep. Curious and adventurous from Tiago. Yep. Um, and Christine, this is a good one. She says, Carrot is adventurous. He wanted something new. I think that's a good way to put it because you can tell he was totally bored at the beginning and at the end he's very happy. So it yeah. looks like he did want something new. <laughs> yeah, that's a great, that's a great answer. Um, so I, I'm curious, what, what do you guys think? Can you think of any other questions that you might ask? Great. What other questions might you ask for reading comprehension questions for this story, everybody? Let's see. Um, what do you think, everybody? Yeah, what do you think, Kate? What, what other questions might you ask? Um, I might ask, what do you think will happen next? Yes, another One prediction. One of my favorites, yep. yep. Um, I might ask, um, what do you think, how do you think Pepper feels? Good one, yeah, reaction. Mm -hmm. Um, I might think, ask about the cat with the love eyes, <laughs> what might happen. <laughs> <laughs> if you had to create your own story yeah, about, like another about story. Carrot and that cat, yep. Why was the girl unhappy from Echo? Yeah, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. Looks like she, they kind of switched because she seemed happier at the beginning and Carrot seemed happier at the end. They kind of switched there. Yeah, maybe she's jealous. Who knows? Yeah, Francisco says, what lesson could we learn from the story? Nice. Um, I like this one from Habib. If you were the cat, would you do it? <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's a great <laughs> one. Um, good. And a couple of others that are, what, what, what are they going to do now or what's happening next? Very good. Great. Yeah, Habib, I'm with you. Um, and if I was the cat, I would definitely do it, especially if it <laughs> could make me fly. Um, <laughs> Cool. And I just really quickly, two questions we had earlier from Ahmed and Ariel about okay. um, speaking skills. Yeah. And I think we're kind of answering our question, this question right now as we're doing this activity, but do comics help with speaking skills too? Yeah, I, I think absolutely. Um, and I think what we're doing right here is a great example. Um, so we can give these questions, these comprehension questions, and we can ask students to write down the answers. But I think if they write down the answers, there should still be a discussion after that. Um, and I think sharing answers like we're doing right now and asking why and asking people to explain their answers, these are all really good ways to practice discussion skills with comics. Um, and then I think the next activity ideas will show a couple of other ways that we can talk about speaking skills as well. Sounds good. All right, so let's go to the next activity suggestion. All right, so for this activity, this is a jigsaw activity, um, and I'm calling it ordering panels activity. So here, what you can do is you can take a comic and you can cut up the panels um, and rearrange them, put them into different order, all right? And then in small groups or in pairs, ask students to work with a partner to put them into the correct order. So I don't think I would do this activity after the comprehension questions, just because we've already talked and seen how the story is ordered. But since we're doing this um, as, as a webinar, I wanted everyone to see the panels um, in really nice detail before we looked at this activity. And you'll see the pictures are a little bit smaller now. So let's take a look um, at the ordering panels activity. 
So we can see here, I've taken the seven panels from the comic and I've cut them up and I've put them out of order. Okay. And what I would say to a class is put these panels into the correct order from first to last and be sure you can explain the reason you chose to order them in this way. And so here we've got some critical thinking. We have some discussion. They're going to be discussing in pairs and groups first and then talking with the class and explaining their choices. Um, and so as long as they can explain and offer a good reason why they ordered the comic in the way that they did, that to me is great. That to me is the purpose of this activity. We already know how it will be ordered, but I'm curious to see if anybody has any other ideas. Um, so I'm also curious. I think this is a pretty, uh, I think this is a pretty common type of activity. So mm -hmm. how would you guys adapt this activity for use with your students or for use with your context? Yeah. So for this ordering activity, what else would you do to, to adapt this for um, your learners? And actually, I think we are getting short on time. Um, so we'd love to hear your ideas. Um, but we might need to move on. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, but one thing I can think of um, in terms of adapting is you could have the students order the um, order the panels and then write the story down if they're more advanced learners. Definitely. And if they're lower level learners, just have them put the story in order and maybe write a couple of a couple of words that they know from vocabulary you've already taught in class. Definitely. Something like that might be a good a good way to do, um, or even for more advanced, as many of us said, um, with um, what happens next, you could have students write a whole little story or make a new graphic, uh, a new activity based on what, ha what would happen next in the story. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Thanks for sharing that, Kate. Sure. Um, so let's go to the next um, activity idea. I think we might go through this question. Um, and now we can talk about creating some dialogue. So similarly, uh, in groups, I'll give students um, a copy of the comic, but with no dialogue in it. And then it will be up to them to create the dialogue for the story. So they'll brainstorm, they'll work with their partners, and they'll come up with new dialogue for the story. So I've got an example of what this might look like. Um, so in the next slides, we can see I've taken the panels and I've removed all of the text balloons. And I went through and I added it slowly. So in the first panel, I have Pepper the Witch saying, I'm almost finished. And Carrot says, I'm trying to sleep. Okay. <laughs> the next panel, Pepper says, hmm, I think I need more magic powder. And Carrot says, nothing, because he's sleeping. <laughs> All right. In panel number three, Pepper decides to dump the whole thing in. And that's when Carrot wakes up and says, don't put in too much. Okay. Mm -hmm. In panel number four, Pepper says, it's so beautiful. And Carrot's reaction is, what did you do? What did you do? What have you done to <laughs> oh, us? No. Oh no, exactly. Yeah. Um, then in panel number five, it's kind of similar to the original. Do not touch my broom. And we have carrot saying, but I really want to, oh, I really want to. And then in panel number six, carrot decides to jump in and says, I just want to try a little bit. It looks so pretty. All right. And then we finally get to panel number seven and here, it's very similar for uh, Pepper's line. Oh, Carrot. But Carrot is so happy. He's just saying, I'm on top of the world. Okay? <laughs> and so this is another one of those activities where, yes, there's some writing. But I think we could also have students present this to their classmates, present in front of the class, present in front of a partner. Um, and I think we can work in some speaking skills as well. This is great. And so it's the same story, just different words. Um, so you're also asking your students to expand on what they know of the language too. This is yep. great. Yep, absolutely. Um, so I have one final activity um, and the final activity is called a picture prompt activity. Um, and so for this activity, what I'll do is I'll take one panel one interesting panel from the comic, and I'll give some brainstorming questions. And I'll ask students to brainstorm first by themselves, 
then with a partner, and finally together as a whole class. And then after we've brainstormed, I'll ask them to do a little bit of writing. I like to do creative writing. I like people to use their imaginations. So let's look at what a panel might look like for this activity. So here we've got the panel. We can see it's very different from the story that we just looked at. So it's happening in a forest. We've got Pepper and Carrot running. There's a castle in the distance. And then I've also provided some brainstorming questions. And these are really simple who, what, where, when, why questions. So where are Pepper and Carrot? What are they doing? What's in Pepper's bag? What's the building in the distance? And the idea for this activity is uh, we've been living in someone else's imagination for a while. And now I think it's cool to let students share what's in their imagination, to take the characters that someone else has created and control them and have them uh, create a new adventure for these characters. So I just think it's important to give students enough time to write something um, that they feel proud about. And I also think it's a good idea to have people share what they've written with their partner or with the class. Um, I think this is another activity where they can write first and then share by speaking second. Sounds good. All right. Um, so I know we're really, I think we're out of time. So I wanna make sure that we finish with just a couple of review points if that's okay. Sounds good, yep. All right, great. So I think using comics and graphic novels can be used to teach vocabulary, can be used to help improve reading ability, but more importantly, for me at least, I think it's a really engaging and cool way to motivate people to be creative in the way they communicate and in the way that they think. I also think as teachers, it's important to take the time to read anything that we're going to ask students to read. We want to make sure it's appropriate. There's not any violence, any offensive language. So just be sure you read it first. Um, and then when using these texts in class, I like to start with some questions that get people thinking and get them hungry. And then at the end, I like to give people a chance to create something themselves. I think it's important to create something as a final product when using comics and graphic novels. So I will end with two images that sometimes appear on the board in my classroom. <laughs> um, so I mainly work with college students, but I like to do little drawings on the board too. And I really appreciate all the participation. I really appreciate everyone being here today. I appreciate discussing this with you, Kate. Um, it's been a really fun session. I hope you guys will consider using comics and graphic novels in your classes in the future. And I hope you have a great day. Well, thank you, John. That was such a wonderful presentation. I'm seeing so many people in the comment section saying, Thank you so much for a nice session. Impressive and informative. Great ideas. Thank you so much, John. It was nice to have you share so much about comics and graphic novels. Thanks for sharing productive information. All tons of comments awesome. like this. So big round of applause from all over the world. Thank you so much, John, for Thank sharing. Thank you, guys. That was, that was wonderful.